Hello there, I'm Simon Colton and today I'll be presenting work done with John McCormack, Sebastian Burns, Yelena Petrovskaya and Michael Cook on adapting and enhancing evolutionary art for casual creation. This is work done in the Sensor Lab of Monash University in Melbourne, Australia and in the Game AI Group uh, in the School of Electronic Engineering and Computer Science at Queen Mary University of London in the UK. So, like many of you, I've known Panuzo Macedo for many years, 20 years in fact, and I've met up with him on many occasions and I always take the opportunity to show him my latest software for generating visual art. I think it's fair to say that he never really liked the images that I managed to produce, but he always comments on how much he likes the user interface, and that spurs me on to make better user interfaces. And I met up with him about a year ago in Madrid, and I showed him the demonstration on the right of an app called Art Done Quick that I'm talking about today. And again, he was very impressed, I think, by the user interface. Um, and that and a number of other things got me thinking that what if the user interface and the user experience are the important things and the images are really unimportant, that making these images is the important part and having them is much less important. And that turns into the question, what if evolutionary art can help people to have fun? Yes, that's right, I did say the word fun. And it's not against the rules of science or academia or even evolutionary art to consider, scientifically, technically, what uh, we have to do to an app to increase the enjoyment that users have when interacting with it. We've all experienced the joy of generative art. Um, and the question is, can we help someone else or everyone else to share in this joy? Now, asking this question isn't actually all that weird. Um, and it was a real relief when Kate Compton and Michael Mateus, in their 2015 paper at the Computational Creativity Conference, introduced the notion of casual creators as interactive systems which encourage fast, confident, and pleasurable exploration of a possibility space, resulting in the creation or discovery of surprising new artifacts that bring feelings of pride, ownership, and creativity to the users that make them. This is the kind of app that I'm interested in making. And Kate went on further to point out that casual creators should expect no domain or technical knowledge. Um, all of the learning must occur in the first few minutes, otherwise you'll lose the user. And the software should provide a good experience even if the user doesn't take the time to have mastery of the software. Um, and casual creators are particularly popular for on device, for handheld devices like um, mobile phones and tablets. Uh, and I thought this is a perfect context for my evolutionary art approach, where making the art is more important, uh, and having fun doing that is more important than having the artworks themselves. So, motivated by the desire to make the most fun evolutionary art app imaginable, I've implemented the Art Done Quick iOS app. This will be for general release later on in the year, uh, and it works on iPhones and iPads at the moment. Um, and this is really an adaptation and an enhancement of an really quite an old evolutionary art technique going back about 15 years, uh, which involves using mathematical functions to send particles around the screen over a series of time steps, uh, and then drawing shapes where they land at each time step and then blurring on occasion. There are many, many technical papers about this um, on my um, web pages if you want to find out about how that works. Um, it's a kind of two-stage process. Um, the software provides rapid generation of baseline art material, which are kind of decorative images, um, and they can be used um, for user development. Um, the user can develop them further by post hoc editing using filters and layers and so forth. Um, they can manipulate the genome directly and regenerate the artwork. 
um, and they can use crossover and mutation as per standard evolutionary art. And on the right here are eight images that um, are produced by the Art Done Quick app. All of them have had a little bit of post hoc editing by a user, which was me. Um, and each one of these images is produced in seconds, really. Um, it never takes more than a minute or two to produce um, an artwork. And speed and ease of use, of course, is, are paramount in the Art Done Quick app. The Art Done Quick app has been engineered over about a year using a fun-first designed methodology. By that I mean that every time I add new functionality or provide a new user experience, I ask, will this add to the fun for most people? Will it give them a cool, new, interesting, enjoyable thing to do? I don't ask the question, will this enable more powerful or more controlled graphic design or indeed produce more sophisticated images? That is less important. I've gone about this in three main ways. I've carefully looked at the advice given by Kate Compton in her design patterns, in her thesis. I've also looked at the many ways in which there are frustrations with evolutionary art and I've tried to minimize them so that users of the software don't have those frustrations. And I've looked around. What do people like doing with other casual creators in visual arts? And I've tried to implement things to increase that in the Art Done Quick app. Now Kate talks about um, apps for casual creation feeling a bit like magic. There's a wow factor to them um, and that often stems from the generativity of the system and that's how I'm going to explain some of the functionality of Art and Quick in later slides. I'll just briefly cover the frustrations that we have with evolutionary art and I'm sure you all know these personally. The first one is that it often takes forever for an interesting image to appear through crossover and mutation. Um, so, Art and Quick has the ability to instantly produce high quality and quite varied images as I describe on the next slide. Another frustration is when you cross over or you mutate a parent and the child looks nothing like the parent and it's like well why did I bother doing that? Or vice versa it may well be that the child looks exactly like the parents and it's like you've made no progress whatsoever. So I've carefully balanced the mutation and crossover rates so that appropriate progress feels like it's being made. Another frustration I've had personally is losing great images. Um, you put them in a directory somewhere and you can't find them again, you can't evolve them. Um, so Arden Quick has this large sheet um, where you can have at least a thousand images on and there are ways to find and organize those images on the sheet. The final frustration is when you've produced an image which is really quite nice, but you just like to enhance it somewhat. So, and if you can't do that, it's frustrating. Um, so, I've added the ability to Art and Quick to edit um, these kind of images to make them perfect. If I just start the video on the right, you can see what I mean by looking at opportunities. Um, looking around at other casual creators on the iOS App Store and seeing what people like doing. Now, one thing they like doing is drawing. It's quite clear, drawing apps are very popular. Um, and they love doing mandalas, which is getting symmetry from drawing in one place and seeing it repeated around um, a circle. And so I've added mandala generation as well, as you can see there. The user interface is all very fluid. You can zoom in, zoom out. Um, and um, the other thing I've added are graphics techniques from the past, when graphics used to be fun and interesting. So things like pixelation, lighting, motion blurring, montages, and as you'll see here, liquefying. There is nothing more pleasurable than liquefying an image. And if you're going to liquefy it once, why not liquefy it four times like I'm doing in this video here? Um, so that we can really enjoy just making these images. It doesn't matter so much whether the images look great or not. And so I've taken it all the way, I've looked at other techniques and included carnival mirrors. Um, again, because this is fun, not because the images look great. I've also added personalization so that people can add their own photos, texts and stickers and can share them on social media. There are three areas in Arden Quick which I hope will feel like magic as prescribed by Kate Compton. The first is the really instant generation of images and it's so fast that when you tap an empty cell on the sheet it really does feel like the image is in your fingertip and you're placing it on the screen. Um, it generates them at 500 by 500 pixels um, and then because of the nature of the generative process it can easily and quickly re-render them at 2000 by 2000 pixels so that you can have a good look at them when you zoom in um, if you tap on that image again. 
This quality, speed and diversity have been achieved with a lot of background work over the years selecting and uh, functions for the genomes and tweaking the generative algorithm. Um, that hasn't narrowed down the search space particularly, there's still 10 to the power of 23 genomes available. Um, and importantly there's a multi-threaded generation going on in the background at all times on in Art Done Quick and that maintains a cache of 30 images in the background so that when you tap the screen there's always one available. I've worked really hard on the image generation efficiency in Art Done Quick. It's done in a two-stage process. First of all, you generate the particle trajectories, and then you render the shapes at the particle locations over time, blurring occasionally. I've slimmed things down so that it only needs to use between 100 and 600 particles over 5 to 70 time steps, um, with blurring occurring every 10 time steps, and shapes normally less than 350 pixels in radius. Importantly, layers of 10 time steps can be generated independently of each other, so they can each be given their own thread and then combined at the end, which is super fast. Um, and also, larger images don't require the regeneration of the trajectories, so not doing that saves uh, some time as well. The end result is going from a time to generate a 500 by 500 pixel image um, being greater than a second, which will be disastrous to the fun of this app, to it being less than a tenth of a second on an iPad Pro, and that really does give you um, so much more enjoyable fluidity in the app. Please see the details in the paper for how I've improved the, uh, the generation efficiency. The second kind of magic in Art and Quick are the endless variations you can get through the general techniques of crossover and mutation. Post-generation editing amounts basically to sequences of image filters and layering up of materials such as text and drawings. And when you double tap on an image on the sheet, that will produce eight mutations very quickly. Um, and simply dragging one image onto another produces ten offspring of the parents also very quickly. Um, now the mutation rate of one or two seems to give you suitable progress. Um, and importantly, the offspring inherit the edit sequence that you've laid onto the parent. And that, to me, feels like the magic bit. You've made all these edits, you've, you really quite like an image, and you double tap it, and you've got eight variations instantly. In the video here, I've created a, an image on top of a piece of wood with a lighting effect, and I've double tapped it, and I've got eight children, variations of it. Um, and that does feel like magic to me. Um, you can re-edit one of the children, um, in this case I'm making it into a more sepia-toned image and I'm adding a spotlight, um, and again they will be inherited by any children of this that I have. With crossover, um, I still need to do more work on this um, because it's not as satisfying as mutating an image, and here the crossover splices in one or two chromosomes from one parent into the other, and then you randomly choose the edit sequence from either of them to apply to um, individual children. Um, unless one of them doesn't have an edit sequence, in which case you take the edit sequence of the other parent. Um, in this way, you can make progress in the space very quickly. Um, and you can get lots of variations, as we can see in this video here, including things with text and so forth. Um, and as you'll see now, um, when you do crossover, it is a little bit disappointing. So I'm going to cross over here to images, and the children are basically like mutations of one and mutations of the other. So there's still more work to be done there. The third little bit of magic in Art Done Quick came when we implemented machine vision techniques to classify images. These are achieved via ResNet, SqueezeNet and MobileNet. These are pre-trained neural network models um, trained over the ImageNet 1000 categories for the competition and made freely available by Apple. So this means that Art Done Quick can label abstract art images. And these are clearly false positives for the machine vision system, but turn that on its head, these become visual interpretations of abstract art for Art Done Quick. And these can be quite fun to see what the software sees in the images. If I reveal here what these three images um, are declared as by ResNet, you see the first one is guitar with confidence 0.83, the second one is a basketball with confidence 1.0, rounded up, and the third one is a tree frog with confidence 0.92. 
And it takes some deciphering. And in particular, there's a moment of inspiration when you realize, for example, the first one, ResNet is seeing the sound hole in your guitar. Not the entire guitar, but the sound hole. The second one, is it a basketball or the net in a basketball pitch that um, ResNet is seeing? And the third one is more obvious. You can quite clearly see the colors of a tree frog and the kind of spindly limbs and an eye there. So once you've seen tree frog in this image, it's unlikely you're going to be able to unsee the tree frog. These moments of realization are the magic bits. Seeing a sound hole of guitar to me was really quite a fun thing. However, they don't happen very often. So I've done a lot of experimentation to optimize this classification process. Um, so that whenever it does make a prediction, there's at least some chance that you'll see what it sees. Um, and that this happens fairly often. The resulting setup was uh, using a strong prediction um, with confidence greater than 0.8 from ResNet, followed by a weak prediction with confidence greater than the average from MobileNet. Um, roughly 1 in 10 images generated randomly pass this test, but unfortunately they're always very similar categories like sea anemone or analog clock or jellyfish. Um, so we had to work harder. We generated more than half a million images over a series of sessions and we managed to build up a database covering 441 ImageNet categories, so almost half of the categories. And then we looked at each of the um, categories and we extracted um, partially by hand, 5,000 genomes into a database. Um, and this became a bit like Bitcoin mining towards the end. We had to use um, more and more difficult search strategies um, to find these final category exemplars. Um, and see the paper for details of that, please. I put examples of images from each of the 441 characters into a poster, like you can see here. Um, and as you can see, uh, images like the Petri dish look really like a Petri dish, and the photocopy looks great too. Microwave is very subtle. Um, others take a bit more deciphering, like the obelisk. Um, and in the top right there, the loggerhead, um, I'm really not sure what that means. Um, but you can see that there is always some kind of visual overlap, or mostly some kind of visual overlap, between the category name and the image presented. This new machine vision functionality is used in various ways in Art Done Quick. Firstly, when you randomly generate images for the empty sheet, it can take from this database of 5,000 images to increase the variety of the imagery and the labeling. Um, users have another entry point, um, so they can start by saying, I want a mantis or I want a suspension bridge. As we can see from the images um, below, there's a number of options for them there. Uh, and finally, I use headless image analysis from ResNet um, to generate vectors of information about each image, and that can be used to cluster images on the sheet um, and to find images which look visually similar. The most important and foregrounded way in which the machine vision is used is by Art and Quick generating image titles for the abstract art images that you and it produces. These are pseudo-random, pseudo-bullshit titles employing what's called International Art English, a form of English which you might recognize from um, art publications. It also uses ImageNet vision categories um, and color profile information to generate titles. Um, there is an AISB20 paper on this, so please read that. I can't go into details today, um, but um, it produces some fun and often humorous um, results, as we can see in the video here. Here I've got some images on the sheet, and when you zoom in close, um, it gives you the title. Here's untitled Deep Magenta. Seeing enemy came from machine vision. Um, the oscilloscope picture simile from machine vision. To symbolically form relation, that's bullshit. Film of a panpipe came from machine vision. A production of formal proposition, that's bullshit. Metaphysical tendency, slight construction, bullshit. A drive to change is probably pseudo bullshit. The portrait of dark green came from the color information. Forming unique convention, you presented as a definite dynamics, bullshit. Then um, aluminium, it came from the color. Analog clock there, that came from a uh, image net uh, category. And, and we see it goes on in this way, producing uh, interesting and often fun and humorous titles. So I hope that gave you uh, enough information about the motivations behind and the implementation of Art Done Quick as a casual creator. 
um, and gives you inspiration to go and read the paper um, for the technical details. This is ongoing work. Um, one interesting thing in the future is um, an installation in uh, an art exhibition uh, in Zaragoza, Spain this year, if the world has stopped imploding by then. Um, and this is going to be called, Can You See What I Can See? If you look in the bottom right video, you'll see that two hands appear on screen, um, gloved hands with a Sensi Lab logo on it, and they're controlling the art done quicker. This is a completely separate AI layer which is able to use machine vision and control of the app in order to produce images for the entertainment of gallery visitors, but also to uh, challenge their conception of machine vision and AI. More details of that will be following, but it was first shown at the Sensor Lab Open House in 2019, and an image of that is on the left. There's still a lot of more work to be done before release of the software. The clustering crossover, title generation, the autopilot and the sharing all need to be improved and implemented. And you might be interested in the psychology and HCI work of Yelena Petrovskaya, a co-author on this paper. Um, she's come up with a typology of casual creators. And really interesting to me is that she's reframing casual creation as a state of mind in the users rather than a, say, a particular technique or a particular type of app. I'll end by asking you to perhaps take a deep breath and ask yourself, will your art generation technique and the results from it lead to great art in a gallery exhibition? Maybe, maybe not, but it may be perfect for casual creation and it can bring joy to the world, not through the artwork that it produces, but through the enjoyment of playing with it like you do to make art. Now, making an app fun is actually a really tough driving force, um, which leads to necessary improvements in both the generation of images and the analysis of those images. Support is available for this. There's a whole subfield of HCI called Phonology. There's a book about that from Spring, and you might want to check out. And Kate Compton gives excellent guidelines for the building of casual creators, um, and there's even a zine that she's produced for this, which is a great introduction. If you want to know how we've used Kate's design patterns um, quite closely, do see the paper for the actual implementation there. I'll end by saying that um, you want to perhaps use a fun-first methodology for making the magic in your app. And I would suggest avoiding frustrations that um, slow down the app or make things difficult. Implement cool stuff which we know works and people love, and do follow um, good design patterns. It's important that it should be a kind of mixed initiative, co-creative, Affair. The software should have some intelligence, but that should be guided by the user at all times um, under their control. I'd like to end by saying thank you so much to the colleagues at SenseLab who gave me fantastic feedback about the Ardon Quick app last year, and also the colleagues at the Game AI group uh, at uh, Queen Mary who also gave fantastic feedback. It's really driven the process forward. Thank you very much. And also to the anonymous reviewers of the paper who gave great feedback too. If you have any questions, please do ask me them now, or contact me on Twitter at Simon G. Colton. Um, it turns out it's very easy to make coronavirus images with Art Done Quick, so I'll leave you there with one, just in case you've forgotten about the world imploding around us for the last 20 minutes. Do stay safe, folks. Thank you very much for listening.